Good morning students. We will start with the first chapter of Flamingo, the last lesson. The poet of the chapter is Alphonse Daudet, who was born in 1840 and died in 1897. He was a French novelist and a short story writer. The last lesson is set in the days of Franco-Persian War in 1870 to 1871 in which France was defeated by Persia led by Bismarck. Persia then consisted of what now are the nations of Germany, Poland and parts of Austria. In this story, the French districts of Elsass and Lorraine have passed into Persian hands. The story deals with the theme of language imposition and language loyalty. The story highlights the pain that is inflicted on the people of a territory by its conquerors by taking away their right to study or speak their own language. Now the summary of the chapter. Friends started for school very late that morning. He was afraid of being scolded because M. Hamill was to question them on participles and he did not know the first word about them. He thought of running away and spending the day out of doors, the warm bright day, the chirping birds and the Persian soldiers drilling in the open field back of the sawmill were tempting. So he thought that he'll spend the day out of doors today and he will not go to school. But he resisted the temptation and hurried off to school. There was a crowd in the front of the bulletin board near the town hall. So whatever news used to come has been put in on the bulletin board. All the villagers have gathered over there to read what is the news regarding the war. But as friends was getting late for school on that day, he didn't pay much attention. And he thought that let's go to school as whenever I have read the news on the bulletin board, it's a bad news. So he didn't pay much, uh, much attention and he hurried off to school. Now watcher, the blacksmith asked friends not to go too fast. He asked, don't go so fast, Bob. You'll get to your school in plenty of time. As he was aware what was written on the bulletin board, so he was assuring the boy that he will not get too late to school on that day. But friends didn't pay any attention to his words and he hurried off to school. Usually there was a great bustle when the school began, but that day everything was as quiet as the Sunday morning. A lot of noise was there whenever the school began. But on that day, there was no noise. It was quite like a Sunday morning that it is a holiday. Then he thought of going to his class. Through the window, friends saw his classmates already in their places and Ham Hamel walking up and down with his terrible iron ruler under his arm. Friends was thinking that every day the friends used to roam here and there why they are sitting on their places so quietly. And M. Hamill was walking here and there, keeping his iron ruler under his arm. Friends opened the door and went in. He blushed and was frightened. He was frightened because he knew that he's late and maybe his master is going to scold him. M. Hamill very kindly asked him to go to his place. He was amazed to see the way he asked him to go to his place. He didn't say a word to him. Friends noticed that their teacher had put on his beautiful green coat, his frilled shirt and the little black silk cap, all embroidered. He wore these only on inspection and prize days. And he noticed one more thing, that always the back benches are empty, but on that day, the villagers have occupied the back benches. So he was wondering that why the villagers are sitting in the class. Everybody looked and Hauser had brought an old primer. And everybody was very sad on that day. M. Hamill said it was the last lesson he would give them. Henceforth, 
only German was to be taught in the schools of Elsass and Lauren. So M. Hamill stood up and he told that today is the last lesson he's going to give to his, the classmates and the villagers because now French will not be taught in the schools of Elsass and Lauren, only German will be taught in the schools. The new master would come the next day. This was their last lesson of French. He wanted them to be very attentive. Friends felt sorry that he had not learned his lessons properly. Now Friends is feeling sorry for not learning his lessons and not listening to his master. The idea that M. Hamill was going away made the narrator forget about his ruler and how cranky he was. And when his master was telling that French will not be taught in the school, he forgot everything, all the scoldings he has got from his master. Now friends understood why M. Hamill had put on his fine Sunday clothes and why the old man of the village was sitting there. Now he understood that why the villagers are sitting at the back and why his master is wearing the fine Sunday clothes. They had come to thank the master for his 40 years faithful service and to show their respect for the country that was theirs no more. You can understand that if your own language will not be taught in the school, how will you feel? M. Hamill asked friends to recite. Now, as you all know that M. Hamill has given homework to friends to recite on participles. So he asked him to start his chapter, but he stood there silent. The teacher did not scold him on that day. The teacher did not scold him for not answering and for not reciting the chapter. He confessed that his parents and he, the teacher, were at fault. He confessed that, that he is not at fault, but the parents are responsible and the teacher is responsible for not paying attention to him. Then he talked of the French language. Now he started speaking about the French language. What is his thinking for French language? He says that French language is the most beautiful language in the world. The clearest, the most logical language. He asked them to guard it among them and never forget him. He asked that if French is not taught in the schools, please don't forget it. Always, always remind your own language. Then they had lesson in grammar and writing. The pigeons cooed very low on the roof. Now friends thought after listening the coo of the pigeons. He says that are they going to ask the pigeons also to sing in German? All the while M. Hamel was sitting motionless in his chair and gazing at one thing or the other. As M. Hamel was very sad, he was looking here and there, and he has nothing to say. His sister was packing their trunks in the room above as they had to leave the country the next day. After writing, they had a lesson in history. Then the babies chanted there, ba, be, be, boo, boo. Even old Hauser was crying. The villagers were crying. All at once, the church clock struck 12 and then the midday prayers. At the same moment, the trumpets of the Persians returning from drill sounded under the windows. Now M. Hamill stood up. He wanted to speak something, but something choked him. He really wanted to say something to his people, to his students, to the villagers who were sitting at the back. But he was unable to say anything because he was really sad about that French will not be taught in the schools anymore. Then he took a piece of chalk and wrote on the blackboard as large as he could, Viva la France. After this, he stopped and leaned his head against the wall. Without a word, he made a gesture with his hand to indicate that the school was dismissed and they might go.
He was not able to speak a word. Only through a gesture, he told his students that it's already time they can go to their house. And he just wrote three words, which were,